For today's video, we're gonna do a fun project where we're gonna build a quail cage. My son Sterling here is joining FFA and he's gonna do a business for a project there where he's gonna sell Caternix quail. We have some chicks that we've started, they've hatched, they're growing, and pretty soon we're gonna move them outside. Now the quail coop that we're gonna build today is called a hoop coop and you use a tarp and some stock panels. It's gonna be 12 foot by eight foot, three sheets of plywood for the base. I learned how to build this on a YouTube channel. It's a great channel called Living Traditions Homestead. And Sterling here is gonna do most of the work building this project. It's really great for the FFA projects where they can learn how to take care of animals, raise them proper feed, also the business skills of selling your product and construction skills. And I've learned construction skills when I was older and I wanna teach those skills to my son. So we're gonna learn how to use a saw properly, drills and measure. So our first step is to build this deck and I have two pieces that are 12 feet long and then pieces that make this eight foot wide. And we're gonna start by screwing in the four corners. We're gonna level it up, make sure it's square. Every two feet, we're gonna put a post and then we're gonna have a piece down the center. Then we can lay our plywood for the deck. So Sterling doesn't have a lot of experience using drills, but we have these long screws here that we're gonna put it together. So he's gonna gain a lot of experience real quick. Well, today we made great progress. We built a platform and the base wall and soon we're gonna add the stock panels. Then I'm gonna call it a day. We have company coming over soon and it's starting to rain. So we're gonna pack up, but first we'll put on those stock panels, then come back another day and add the tarp and the front walls, the door, the back walls, and we'll be ready for the quail. So let's go ahead and put on these stock panels. Let's go. So we're back to work on the hoop coop. With our busy schedule, we can only work on it a few hours at a time. And today we're building the back wall. There's many different ways to build the back wall, but I decided to build an arch out of plywood. That will give it quite a bit of side to side strength and then we'll put lumber below it to hold it up and then we'll put a screen and that should be done with the back wall. Let's go put this up. We have the back wall framed in. Now we're gonna add the wire. We're gonna use half inch hardware cloth. So Sterling's been working so hard and we're now ready for a big step. We have the frame complete, we can put on the tarp. This is a 12 by 16, so we'll go ahead and put this on, secure it with screws, and then we're almost done. Well, the construction of our hoop coop is now complete. Sterling did a great job and he learned a lot of new skills, especially fitting PVC pipe, cutting wood, and just general measuring. So we're ready to move the quail in and we actually have to move the quail in. They're large enough and fully feathered and we have another 120 chicks hatching today. They need to go in the brooder and these other ones will go in their new home. And I'll show you the water system, the feed system we're gonna set up. We're gonna lay down some sawdust. We actually make our own sawdust. I plane it out of our own wood. We use maple and a planer and that works really well. But our goal is to make these quail comfortable. We're gonna give them grass to hide in, plenty of food. And so we'll get this set up and then we'll show you the quail going to their new home. 
So these quail will have automatic waters and the supply is this large barrel. We have it plumbed into the coop and also a shot off valve over there. That way we can drain the tank and clean it out. So we'll fill this up and then show you the water system. So here's the automatic water cups connected to the barrel and when the quail push on the yellow part, it fills up. There's air in the line because the first time we use it. But every time they want water, they peck the yellow piece and have a drink. And now that we have the automatic water system in, we're now going to add the bedding, those wood shavings we made with the planer. Now while the quail learn to use their new water system, I'm also going to add their old water system just to help the transition to their new home. Now we are also going to add a sandbox for the quail. They love to bathe in it. It helps them clean their feathers and deal with parasites. So this is something new. They've never had a sand bath before and I'm sure they'll love it. They'll also grab some of the stones for grit. We're going to give the quail a place to hide and feel safe with some branches and some cattails as grass. And here's two styles of quail feeders we have. Now quail are notorious for spilling feed and wasting it and feed is expensive. So we have this style they've been eating on and we also have a new style. These are 3D printed. I got these on Etsy. They're quail feeders that you drill a hole in a plastic container and that way the quail sticks his head in there but it can't really spill it. So hopefully it doesn't waste as much food. At first the quail hung out in the grassland. They felt very safe in there, but it didn't take long for them to discover their new home. They really liked the sand bath and also the feeding station and the new water system. Well, it's been over one month since we first put the quail in the hoop coop and I have a few final thoughts and words of caution if you want to raise quail in here. As you can see, these quail are flighty. I noticed that right away and they'd fly straight up, hit the wire and they'd hurt themselves. So we added a bunch of cattails up there. When they take off, they hit the cattails and they don't hit the wire with full force. Keep that in mind. Most people that raise quail have them in a narrow pin and that way they're not constantly flying up. So if you have a tall pin, just be aware that they're flighty. They're getting better as they come in here every day, but they can hurt themselves by flying straight up. Also, they like to congregate in the corners. I had to put wood in there. That way they don't bunch up and smother each other. They don't use all the space. They really like the edges and the corners. So make sure you don't create a problem where they're going to trample and kill each other in the corners. I put the logs there. It works well. Also, the water system seemed like it had a problem. A lot of people like these where they peck the yellow part right there and it fills up the cup. But I got the cheapest ones on Amazon and I had a lot of leakage and they'd even break up when the quail would fly up and hit them. They'd snap right off. So I changed my water system to these blue cups and those seem to work very well. The feeding system is perfect. I had over a hundred quail and they'd eat so much food they would spill a ton of it and waste it. But I'd get these. They sell them on Etsy and they pay for themselves. The quail hardly waste any food when they put their head in there. They peck on it, but they can't really scratch it and spill it. So that's a huge money saver. Make sure you win the feeding system. You have this type where they can't spill it. Now another thing is the bedding. It's been a month and after a month, the bedding wasn't too bad, but I did change it out. So I'd say changing it maybe every month or even two months if it's dry seems to work well. There's a lot of ventilation and the heat and the wind dry out their poop. So it doesn't smell at all and it's very clean. But since they're laying so many eggs, I want to make sure it's very, very clean. Now I also noticed when we first put the quail in here, there was only seven and that was too much space for the quail. They were so nervous. They'd constantly fly around. They're much more calm with larger groups. I figure it's closer to like a school of fish where they hang together. They feel safe, but if they're spread out alone, they feel like a predator can get them and they are crazy, major crazy when they fly up. You'll also notice there's quite a bit of crowing. You have to watch your male to female ratio. I moved half the males outside. I have a quail tractor on grass. Those are quail we're going to butcher and they get to be grass fed along with feed. I'm keeping the hens in here and there's way less aggression. Now you can have quail that are females and pretty aggressive, but overall, if you have too many males, they are going to fight each other and also they're going to harass the females. They might even scrape off all the feathers on the back overbreeding. So I'd recommend not keeping so many males in this pen, but having over a hundred quail in here seemed like it's still pretty spacious. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please consider clicking that button.